This video is sponsored by Film Convert. In our last tutorial, I showed you guys just how powerful Film Convert was as a standalone plugin. Today, we are going to take our knowledge a step further by using an HDR workflow to maximize all the dynamic range that our camera has captured to get the best possible image while using Film Convert. <laughs> So you might be wondering why there's a separate workflow instead of simply letting Film Convert handle the Rec. 709 conversion itself. And in order to get you guys to see the importance of this workflow, I think I should just show you what Film Convert is going to do and then how what I do differently helps improve the image overall. Just a quick disclaimer, this is not an industry standard HDR color grade. That would require a reference monitor that probably starts around $10,000, upwards of $50,000. And that is not accessible to the majority of you guys out here. So this is why we are doing this workflow today. So if I'm just going to let Film Convert handle the conversion, we are going to go to Open Effects, Apply Film Convert, and then we are going to select our camera. So this is Zcam E2, F6, and Zlog2. Now I am going to give this a completely fair shot. I am going to increase the saturation a bit, and then I'm going to bring down my grain curve just a little bit here, All right? Just a little bit. Just so it doesn't look like we underexpose the image. I will move the tint just a bit and then move the temperature a bit as well. Now, I'm not gonna do too much here. Like I said in my last tutorial, I don't use the levels too much to adjust these points. So what we're gonna do is we are going to grab a still and this will be saved over here for us to reference later. Now we are going to go through my workflow. So before we get into the HDR workflow, the first thing we are going to do is click on DaVinci Resolve, Preferences, click over to User, make sure we are on the Color tab, and make sure the box is checked that says Enable HDR Scopes for ST2084 and HLG. Then click Save. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to add three nodes. So we have node 1, node 2, and node 3. Here in node two, we are going to add a color space transform node. This is because we are going to handle the Rec. 709 conversion ourselves. So we want the input color space for film convert to be sRGB. So what we're gonna do is basically before we start even grading is we're gonna turn this into sRGB. We're thinking of these nodes as layers. So we're not getting into sRGB until we get to node two, but everything we do in node one will be reflected in sRGB if we make sure we do this first. That way there's no funky things happening if we converted it later. So our output color space is sRGB and our output gamma will be selected as sRGB as well. You see that made a slight gamma shift, nothing to worry about close the open effects panel. After we have successfully transformed our color space, we are going to turn node one into an HDR node by left clicking on node one and clicking HDR mode. You will see the importance of this in just a second. Now the color grade here is pretty straightforward. Lift represents our shadows, gamma represents our midtones, and gain represents our highlights. Notice we are in the primary wheels tab. What we are going to do is we are going to set our black point using our waveform and then set our white point using our waveform. And we can adjust in between there by using our midtone slider or our gamma slider to really fine tune the image and go back and revise the black point and white point as needed. So this is all up to personal preference. I like to bring my black point right before it hits zero nits. Nowadays, it's really popular to crush those blacks, and that's completely okay if it's your style. But simply put, I'm going for a really Hollywood-esque image, so I'm going to let those blacks just be right before they hit zero nits. Now you can see here, I have a little bit of information and a little bit more room to push my highlights. So that's exactly what we're going to do. But before I do that, I know that if I adjust my midtones, 
it's gonna push those highlights up naturally. So I'm just gonna bring those up just a little bit to get some more detail out of my skin. And then I'm going to push that gain right before it hits 10,000 nits. So before and after of our image, look at how much detail we've retained while also bringing in some contrast. Now to finish this off, we're gonna add some saturation into the image. I know the Z cam works best at 100. Again, before and after, we already have a very Hollywood-esque image. Now here's the importance of that HDR node. If I turned off HDR mode, this is what our corrections would look like. HDR mode simply makes everything far more intuitive for you to use as the end user. So we're going to leave that on. Now we're gonna come into node three, and this is my favorite part. We're going to add film convert. Now the moment we add film convert, you see the profile says standard sRGB. This is why we convert it into sRGB before we put on film convert. What this does is it takes all of our corrections, puts them into sRGB, and then sends it to Film Convert, so it's only applying the film stock emulation and not any exposure correction to the image that would be applied to a log curve. Think of these nodes as layers in Photoshop. Everything you do stacks. Now what we're going to do here is just the same thing that we did when we initially just used Film Convert for the image. I would like to increase the saturation just a smidge, or actually a lot, I like it a lot. <laughs> And then I'm gonna to come to my grain response curve and all I'm gonna do here, and I want you to see just how simple this is to get a very Hollywood-esque image. I'm just gonna pull the grain a little bit out of the shadows and the midtones, leave it in the highlights so that it doesn't look like we underexposed before and after. Now we talked a lot about that still. So let's go ahead and play that still so that we can see why we use this HDR mode instead of just letting Film Convert handle our pushed image, our image that is already being pushed to the max and may be unconventionally exposed. Film Convert's image, our quick color grade. The image speaks for itself. As we can see, Film Convert is a very powerful plugin. However, when we are pushing our image and our camera sensors to the max, sometimes it is best to use our knowledge as a colorist to override that Rec. 709 grade and then let Film Convert handle the beauty of film. If you guys are interested in Film Convert, be sure to check out a link in the description down below for an extra 10% off of their already 20% off sale. This is a combined total of 30% off this is not an affiliate link. This is simply my gift to you guys, my lovely community. I thank you so much for my support, and I wouldn't tell you guys to use a product if I didn't use it myself. If you guys like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. If you guys are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always guys, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.